The first operation in making the air injection assembly is to measure the distance between the two end plates. We should then add 10 millimetres to this measurement. Now we're going to cut off a section of 40 millimeter acrylic bar. Remember that I've already added 10 millimeters to this measurement. To make the air injector housing, you should take your piece of bar and drill it out right through with an 11.5mm drill. Then turn it round and bore it out with a 16 and then a 20mm drill, leaving 11mm on the end so that you've got enough room to tap it with a quarter BSP tap. First we'll centre drill, then we'll use the 11.5mm drill all the way through and then step drill to 20mm using a 16mm and then a 20mm drill. To make the air injector itself, you want to take a piece of 20mm diameter bar, acrylic or nylon or whatever comes to hand, put it in the housing and then basically just add an inch in length. At this point you should hold the bar firmly in the housing and mark off where it enters the housing. Now it's back to the lathe. We're going to turn the end that sticks out of the housing down to 6mm. Now that we have the injector in the housing, some of you may be wondering 
how I plan to mark out this curvature on the end of the housing. To mark out in the correct place, take one plate off, turn it round, insert the housing and injector, and there you can see where to mark off. Take a felt pen, holding the housing steadily against the plate, mark off both sides without moving the housing. Then we have two marks. Using a straight edge, carry the lines on. Remember, don't go any further up than this because you don't want to cut into the area that contains the thread. If you make a mistake, just take a bit of cloth with alcohol. Mark it out again. Now that you've marked out the housing, don't just cut in a straight line down here. Use the outside of the housing as a guide. should also be noted that the air should be coming out of the air injector at an approximately tangent angle to the discs. So we should relieve these two areas as well. First, however, we need to remove the majority of the material with a hacksaw because the blade simply isn't deep enough to cut right through in one pass. With the majority of the material removed, it's now possible to use the Dremel to cut down these sections. And it's probably a good idea at this point to develop these lines along here so that we don't cut in too far. Once again, remember your eye protection for this. Okay, here's the finished result. You don't need to go right all the way up to the end. It's quite difficult to get the Dremel tool into the end. I just cut down both sides, snapped the centre piece out and then cleaned it up with a file and some sandpaper. Now we can see that once we drill the hole for the air it will have a clear path out onto the discs.